Hi everybody, it's Sandy. Welcome to my YouTube channel where today I'm going to make a pulled spinner card. I saw this on Pinterest and that led me to Connie Stewart's YouTube channel where she was making this cute little bee. Is he not the most fun? I have been looking for just the right stamp to try this with and I found the clearly besotted Let's Roll set. This little hedgie is going to spin around and be adorable. I'm coloring them with Copic markers on 110 pound Nina so that these little hedgies when they're cut out will withstand being on an interactive card. Since they're going to move or at least some of them are going to move then I want them to be on good heavy paper. To color the bodies I wanted some white highlights so I'm starting with the zero marker first and that allows these other colors to kind of blend without having to do the zero marker at the end to soften those edges. It just softens them kind of as the colors go on. There were a few spots I wanted to tidy up so I just took my zero marker and went back in and went over those areas just a little bit and I think the skin tones came out great. I used the shadow color for the ears and the little feet just to add a little bit more contrast to them and then we're going to let that part be and move on to the bodies. Now I did a little research on them. I didn't know whether to call this hair or whatever on little hedgies and a lot of people think they have quills but they're called spines because spines have solid shafts but quills like on other critters are hollow like feathers are. So I thought that was an interesting little bit of tidbit information for you. On the top two the shading that I'm putting with the warm gray marker is just around where the spines meet the body. I decided not to do any directional lighting on those because there's not really much of an area to do that on at least on their bodies. There is a little more on the faces and the little flesh tone parts but that really isn't all that important. This is really super easy coloring to do and since I'm going to be fussy cutting these out I'm even going outside the lines as you can tell. There are dyes to go with this but I wanted to make sure I cut these nice and close to get the effect I wanted on the card. I'm adding a little extra color on the the little guy down here at the bottom. He's going to have a little more directional lighting just because he's a side view so there's a whole lot of this gray area. So he's going to have a little extra dark color at the bottom of him and that's about it. I'm not going to I'm not going to fuss a whole lot about any directional lighting. Blend it out with that light gray. And now I'm going to go back in with the warm gray and add a little bit more color right around each one of those spines that are drawn on there. Each one of the little lines. And the reason is going to become clear in a moment because I want a little more contrast right around those lines so that when I take my next step they really show up more and have a little more impact than they would if they were just on the light gray. So I love the way that warm and cool grays work together on critters like this. So I'm going to take my white Signo pen and scribble on my finger a little bit and then draw over each one of those little spine lines. I was talking with the store owner out at Queens Inc. in Savage, Maryland about Signo pens and she told me something that like I thought maybe this is the reason why a lot of people have trouble with their Signo pens. If you think about these they're a ballpoint pen. They're a roller ball. That means the ball is rolling around in that tip. And if you press it down really hard, that ink is not going to be able to get around the bottom side of that roller ball in order to get onto your paper. So maybe some folks who are having trouble with the Signo pen are smashing the pen too hard into the paper. That's possibly the issue. I don't know. I wish I knew because you see how easily my pen goes on. I do have a very light touch and I even go over things twice because it is such a light touch to try to you know scribble that color on make sure I get enough of it maybe I have a lighter touch than some folks and that could be why your pen skips I'm not sure anyway I've got my little guys all cut out with my little detail scissors and then I got out some of the latest and greatest pad from Authentique. I love this. I don't use pads of paper very much anymore, but Authentique took the best of a whole bunch of different lines and they put them in one pad. So I can have a little taste of everything. I love that. I thought it was a genius idea of them to do this so I could just have a sampling of everything. Here's a snippet from a friend of mine who loves 6x6 pads. She has made a video that has, oh my gosh, using an entire pad the entire thing in one video. You've got to go see this. I'm going to link you to that at the end of this video as well, so don't miss it. I picked out two colors for my card and they're both tone-on-tone -tone colors. One is a tone-on-tone -tone green, the other is a tone-on-tone -tone blue. 
so that they're really subtle colors and my critters will stand out. And I have the other two pieces then left over for another card if I wanted. But I'll have another use for them in a moment. I cut out a piece of white paper that's slightly bigger than the green and blue together. So the white is four by five and a quarter and the others are just slightly, slightly smaller. So I have a little tiny white border around the edge. Then I took a power tab to start constructing my version of Connie's little spinner thing. And I, I made a mistake here, shouldn't have done this step yet, but you'll see why in just a moment. I was trying to make a little hexagon type shape like she had. She was using the Stampin' Up Dimensionals and I'm gonna use power tabs and I'm gonna construct mine in a particular way. So I'm gonna stab a hole in the middle of it with a piercer and then I feel like I'm doing surgery on, on a power tab because I want to not touch the sticky part any more than necessary because I'm gonna need to, I need it to be sticky. So I'm gonna put my twine on next and then I have a brad. You want the thinnest head brad you, you can find and also really long tines on it because it needs to go all the way through the back of the card. But since I'm using this really thin dimensional instead of a couple of Stampin' Up dimensionals like she did, I think I can get away with not as long of a little little brad ends on mine, the little, little things that stick out the back of the brad. My head is also bigger on this. It's very flat. It's a diamond, diamond triangle shape, but I put it in this tiny little hole after I assembled it and put another one on top and I had a little trouble getting it in there. I actually am going to take it back out in a moment and make a bigger hole but I wanted to show you my cleanup and what I had to do to repair. The top power tab that I put on over top of my brad is now square and the other one is not. So it would help if you're doing this, trim it afterward because I'm trying to make it a little roundish. But then I went around it, this is the, the part that's gonna really help, is putting this little powder tool all the way around the edge of the sticky so that it won't be super sticky. So here's where I poked a bigger hole because the first one didn't go around nearly as easily. It didn't, it didn't spin. But my little guy is now glued to the top of that from that top power tab. And I wind my twine around and around and around. You don't want to wind it too tight, just tight enough. And then look, he spins. Oh man, I'm just so happy. The inside of my card is made with one of the hedgies and a little hillside and scraps of the other papers to decorate that up. And here's the outside with two hedgies sliding down the old hillside. I added a few punched clouds and I made a little pull tab out of two hearts glued on either side of that string so the recipient knows to pull on that little string. Isn't this just so much fun? If you have some images that you want to try this with, I would love it if you would either leave me a link on my blog or tag me on Instagram so I can share what you have created because there's so many great images that would be great fun to do on an interactive card. So I'm going to link you to a couple of videos here. Another beginning Copic coloring and interactive card is this little shark on the left. And then we've got a little more beginning Copic coloring because I'm, I'm assuming that some of you might need some beginner lessons in how to use your Copic markers. And I think these two videos are pretty good at explaining some of the basics. I also wanted to link you to those two videos that I talked about, both Connie's original B card that she made over on the YouTubes, as well as Christie's patterned paper six by six tutorial, which is just genius. And it's mesmerizing to watch her make that many cards in just a little while on YouTube. All right, you guys go have fun watching some videos and I'll talk to you later. See ya.